Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I use the Liquitex to create my water effects on my river pieces that I will be using in my Market Garden project. All right, first of all, we have some materials here. We have some plywood from Midwest. It's a craft plywood. I'm using the 6 inch by 12 inch board plus a uh, 1 quarter inch cork board and you'll need an X-Acto knife and what I did was I cut the the cork to form the river banks and then I and see it only extended onto the plywood about an inch or two using a spray adhesive. But before I did that, I sprayed the entire board with the blue uh, that you can see over there. And then I applied the spray adhesive and put the cork on top of that. And that's kind of what it would look like after I glued the spray adhesive. Now, on the that's my gravel that I normally use on my bases. I put that along the river bank. Uh, I also painted, I mean, uh, I also flocked the top with my Woodland Scenics blended turf. The uh, close to the bank, I also applied a little bit of this light blue to give it a, a like a two dimensional shade right there. And I just, you know, mixed and then I applied a little water to it to make it look like it was blending from the really harsh light blue into the dark blue. Now I'm using this product called Liquitex. Uh, Liquitex Gloss Heavy Gel. Uh, it's not Liquid X, it's Liquitex. And it's about $16.99 for a little container about that much. Uh, I thought that wasn't going to be enough. And I used a one inch uh, painter's brush. I just scoop it up just like that, a cl big clump like that. And then I apply it directly to the paint, the board. And then I just mix it around and spread it around with my brush. Now, because I chose the super heavy gel, you don't really have to worry about it uh, dripping or or uh, le uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, dripping or, or seeping off the edge of the board. It actually stays right where you put it. And now I'm using the forward pressure of the brush to push the Liquitex up against the coast. And if I was doing a an ocean or something with waves that might splash in to the to the riverbank, that would almost be a cool looking effect the way I'm doing it right now. But this is actually supposed to be a 28 millimeter board. You could do this board for one 1200, you know, like naval battles or what have you. But I'm using it for a 28 millimeter effect. And I don't want it to be a, a coastline. I want it to be a river. So I draw the Liquitex linearly as if it was a current in the in the river like and then all the little brush strokes all the brush the bristles leave their little mark uh, that is actually the effect I'm going for because when it dries you'll see all those brush marks but because I'm going full length along the river you're gonna see um, you're gonna see the strokes now I'm also, I'm gonna put a, a wiggle to it. That's a little too harsh, right? That's way too harsh for the river, but I don't want it to be perfectly straight. So I just go over it. This process took me a while to figure out exactly how I wanted the effect to look. Um, those, are, those all look like it's traveling inward towards the coast. So I am wiggle, there you go. I'm wiggling, but very shallow wiggles if that makes sense. So the water will look like it's in motion, but not towards the bank. I want it to look like it's in motion down the river. 
and you can't start your stroke in the middle of the river because you see what happened right there. I got this deep gouge. So you have to start your stroke all the way at the end and come all the way across. And I do it both ways, and there I got to fix that. Now I thought about doing a stippling effect like this to make the water look really rough and and uh, choppy, and you could do that for an ocean in bad weather or something like that, but uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to do the gradual current down the river. A little bit it went off the edge. That's all right. Just scooped it up with a brush. All right. Now, <clears throat> you're going to have to let these, this dry for 24 hours. Uh, and that depends on how thick you put it on. I actually, you, this coating that you see that I put on, that's a very thin coat. If I had applied an extremely thick coat, it might take longer than 24 hours because that thin coat took probably about 40, uh, 30 hours. Because I remember after 24 hours, I was like, let's check it. And I was like, no, it's not fully painted or fully dry. So I decided I'm going to add an extra layer right here. Now, I'm not going to be using this Liquitex on any other projects. And I don't want it to just dry out in my container. Uh, and I don't want to waste any. So I figured I'm just going to go ahead and thicken up. I went ahead and did the light coat on everything. Realized I had extra Liquitex. So I figured I'd go ahead and do an extra coat. Thicken it up a little bit. And that might be why it took longer than 24 hours to dry. Give it its little current and move in towards the coast the shoreline there and because it takes a while to dry you've got a, a while of you got a, a, a lot of time to work with it to uh, get it to form or shape the way you want uh, I've seen some people take it and make waves with it. I mean, high waves, you know, and uh, just let it dry just like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, an extra layer to all of this because I still have quite a bit of this Liquitex. And uh, we'll come back once I get this all dried up and I do a little bit of extra work on the... Uh, <clears throat> on the, the boards uh, because I put a little bit of extra uh, life because that green grass on the side is just not enough uh, contrast to the board but that's not what we're talking about today we're talking about the actual Liquitex um, just taking more spreading it out trying to trying to make it a little bit thicker the reason why I might want to make it a little bit thicker is you want the water to appear to have depth to it, um, I'm using the I'm using the True Blue uh, paint to provide a color depth. But if you want the clear coating to be thicker, it'll actually also enhance your depth of your river. And don't worry about the edge actually causing your gravel to get wet or moisture to seep up to the up the coastline or whatever, because it does not. Uh, it retains its own moisture. It doesn't um, seep into other things. All right, now when these dry, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. It's been a couple of days after I applied the Gloss Heavy Gel Liquitex to the river pieces. You can see a couple of other river pieces out here as well. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you what it could look like 
Um, this is one of our river pieces, right? Uh, I went ahead and put the gravel on there. I went ahead and flocked it. I even put a little bit of light green along the shoreline there, the coast, uh, the, the, the bank, and then I put some uh, clump foliage in there as well. Uh, you can go elaborate all you want, but really what I was doing here in this video is really focusing on the Liquitex and how it uh, came out pretty good. Now, I don't know if you can see that in the lighting. I'm going to try to adjust the lighting a little bit here and kind of show you the reflection. And you can see how the Liquitex holds a... Uh, all these lines are in the you can kind of see the ripples and I wanted to make that I wanted to do the ripples by, by using the brush I wanted the heavy to uh, actually show the brush strokes and instead of going uh, making the ripples look like they were going into the coast this isn't a this isn't an ocean this is a river and so, or a canal so I wanted it to look like current going th lengthwise and not like uh, waves lapping against the beach, right? So I, so I did this. But I didn't want to go too excessive on the wiggles, so I just did a gradual wiggle all the way down. And that's what you get. Now hopefully I got that focused. All right, now let's, let me show you the, uh, another piece. All right, now this is going to be one of the bridge pieces, obviously, because of the peninsula here. Um, or I got the road coming right up to the edge. Uh, but I still did the same thing. I put some light green scatter along the shore, the bank, and then I put some clump foliage in there, disguising any imperfections or anything like that as well. Uh, I took some of the flock and I allowed the flock to kind of go over the edge. Uh, as well, but again, the focus is more on the the current. And now, I put this on wood, right? This is pretty stout, and I can go over it with a wet rag to clean it if I need to. And it's it's good. It's good and dry. See how that looks? I think that looks really good. Need to put some clump foliage on this one, but all right. Well, that was the use of my Liquitex on my painted wood to make rivers, to make the, the water effects. Now, this is a really thin coat. So a single thin coat. I could have uh, just applied it, let it dry, and then come on and apply it again. Or I could have just put a very large, heavy coat on, and it would have taken longer to dry, but it would have been a thicker, it would have been thicker. But I think that turned out really well. I think that turned out really good for, for coast, uh, for my rivers. All right, guys, thanks for coming out and watching me apply some Liquitex. And yeah. That's going to work out really good for my market garden campaign. All right, well, I'm going to continue on working on these tiles that I'm working for for my own uh, for my own use. Uh, I'm going to use it for a lot of different games. Yeah, another thing, let me just go ahead and do this, just so you can kind of see. Maybe you can see this on the camera. Okay, now the way I did it was I put it on two six inch tiles to be able to form a river down the center of a 12 inch tile. Uh, if I used a 12 inch tile to create the rivers, you wouldn't get the seam in the center, right? It would have just been one solid river. But I think that looks pretty good the way it is. 
And the reason why I did that was so that if I ever needed to expand the river, I could put just a blue piece in there, one, a solid blue piece, and it would have been a wider river. Or if I ever just wanted to put these on the edge like that, I could create a coast or just um, like if it's an if the river is the end of the table, I could put this on the end of the table and it will look like uh, it would only be split. I wouldn't have to put both sides. That's why I went with the six inch tiles. And I think that looks really good as a bridge over this this river. Alright guys, if you guys got any comments, if you like it, or if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do. If you want to support the channel, please hit the uh, PayPal me link in the description below, or you can hit uh, any of the funding methods that are on. And uh, I really appreciate it. And let me go ahead and continue on working on these tiles, and I'll see you next time.